Welcome back. In this module, we're going to do everything we need to do in Google Cloud for Mage to read and write data to both Google Cloud Storage and Google BigQuery. Um, the rest of uh, our tutorial is going to take place in Mage, but this is just basically the, the Google Cloud side of things. So the first thing um, that we're going to need to do uh, is create a Google Cloud Storage bucket, if we haven't already. Um, so if you just search Google Cloud Storage, um, and the first result will take you to uh, our buckets. Look, I have one named Matt Demo, but we're going to create a new one for this project. Um, so I'm going to call it Mage Zoom Camp Matt Palmer. And then I think I've created a few of these already, and they have to be globally unique, so I'll call it Matt Palmer 3. I'll hit continue. Multi-region is fine. Um, storage class doesn't really matter. Make sure that public access prevention is enforced. That just means your bu bucket isn't publicly accessible. Um, continue and confirm and we should be done. And so basically what you've created is a cloud storage file system for us to interact with and engage with. So that's pretty cool. Um, next, uh, Mage uses service accounts to connect to GCP. So if you simply search service account, first result service accounts, I am an admin is what we want to go to. Um, you can see I have a few created here, uh, but we're going to create a new service account. Um, and this is just like a set of permissions that you're granting and credentials associated with those permissions. Um, so we'll call it Mage Zoom Camp, um, create and continue, uh, select a role. So this is where you can select access permissions for this service account. I'm going to side on the more generous uh, end and just make it an owner of my Google Cloud resources because I know that doing this is going to allow us to edit everything in GCS, everything in BigQuery. If you're more security conscious, read up on these um, these credentials and be a bit more specific, but that's what I'm going to grant for our service accounts. So clicking continue um, and clicking done, we basically have these credentials now. So our uh, Mage Zoom Camp service account, if we cl click on that, we can see our details. And what we're gonna need to do is create a key. Um, so we'll add a new key, create a new key, and we wanna use a JSON payload. So doing that's gonna download a file to your computer. So you can click close. Um, and what you're gonna wanna do is copy that payload into the mage project directory. So do that and then we'll catch back up uh, in a second. Okay, so we're back. Um, you can see I have VS Code open um, and this is my service account uh, JSON file, verdant current, a bunch of random letters and strings. Uh, and note that in the Docker file, we're just defining this volume for our mage instance and we're saying hey dot that's going to go to home source in our mage container what that means is all of these files are going to be pulled into mage um, and live in that mage container docker is going to like mount that as a volume so what that means is that our json credentials here that only exist locally are going to be mounted to our mage volume and then we can use those credentials when we're interacting with google um, to authenticate so I'm going to open up Mage, uh, and we're going to walk through authenticating uh, with these credentials. So I'm going to go to localhost um, 6789. Uh, we're going to uh, go to our files. So we're going back to ioconfig. Big surprise. We spend a lot of time there. And we'll note that there are two, um, two ways to authenticate with Google service accounts. So you can either paste what's effectively a JSON payload. That would be this, this first option. Or we can just use the service account key file path. So we're gonna delete that first option and then we're going to drop in the path to our service account key. And if you remember, I mentioned that the volume is mounted. So if we actually go to the terminal, you can see we're in home SRC and we do like a ls-la to list all files. Well, there is our service account key in our mage um, instance. And so I'm gonna copy that. You can go back to files, scroll down. I didn't save this, so voila, it's back, but um, we'll delete it one more time. So now we know what the path is for this. We paste that in. Oh, it didn't actually copy the home source, so this should be slash home slash SRC slash and the name of our payload. Save that, command S. Now Mage knows where to look for our credentials, and when we use any block with Google Cloud uh, Storage, Google BigQuery, any Google project, Mage is going to use that service account in order to execute the cell. So we'll go back to our pipelines. We had this test config pipeline. Uh, we'll just reuse that. Um, we can actually switch this data loader to 
BigQuery. We can test our BigQuery um, instance as long as we swap that back to default. We'll click Run. And it's connecting to BigQuery. So this query is connecting to BigQuery, executing select one, returning the result. This is actually being run in the cloud, magic, um, and it works. So we can connect, can connect to Google BigQuery. Uh, next, what we can do is test um, Google Cloud Storage. So that's actually a little uh, trickier. Let's because we want to make sure we can read files and write files. But let's what we'll do is we'll go to our example pipeline. Um, and if you remember, what this pipeline does is load a Titanic data set and then write it to a file. Export Titanic clean, Titanic clean CSV. So scroll down to this data exporter, click the three dots and click execute with all upstream blocks. And this is going to load that CSV, process it and write it to a local file in our mage project. Um, so what we can actually do then is upload this to Google Cloud Storage. So we'll walk through the process for that. I'm going to go to um, console.cloud.google.com um, and we can go back to cloud storage. We'll go to our buckets. We should have our uh, mage zoom camp bucket. Hopefully you named it something other than map Palmer three. I actually don't think you can name it anything <laughs> because they're, they're globally unique names. And now if we open up, uh, so I have VS code open as well. I'll open that back up. Um, Voila, Titanic Clean is, is present in VS Code. We can just drag and drop this here to upload it. Um, Titanic Clean.csv uploaded in our bucket. We can go back to Mage, so that's localhost 6789, back to our test config pipeline. Uh, we'll edit the pipeline. We don't need this data loader anymore. We know this works. We're just using it to make sure everything works as expected. What we'll do is we'll do another data loader in Python from Google Cloud Storage. Test GCS. So now we're going to test that Google Cloud Storage works. So we need a bucket name, um, Mage, Zoom Camp, Matt, Palmer, three, and then our object key, which is uh, Titanic Clean .csv. I, I don't even want to look, go back and look at the other tab. We're just going to roll with that um, <laughs> that name. Command Enter. We'll see if it can connect. It initialized it. It's loading data frame from bucket. Uh, and our data frames loaded. So just like that, we know that we're connecting to Google Cloud Storage. Very simple and easy. All we had to do was create a service account, drop that JSON in our local development um, environment, and now we can connect to BigQuery. We can connect to GCS. Um, with that done, the next step is to start building pipelines that use GCP and GCS, which we're going to do in the next video. Um, so stick around. This is where it gets fun. Uh, thanks, guys.